Tina with Target Tamers and we're discussing the monocular versus binoculars. Many of you may already use some form of monocular in combination with binoculars such as a laser rangefinder or a spotting scope, but the compact handheld monocular can be especially beneficial for certain applications like hiking, general wildlife observation, and even bird watching and some professional employment. Let's go over how they compare and let's get this match started. In this guide, we're referring to monoculars as the compact handheld low power optics. Spotting scopes are monoculars too, but they serve a different purpose. A monocular can be considered half of a binocular with a single objective lens and a single eyepiece lens. It usually has low magnification, but larger objective lens monoculars can also have higher magnification of 8 times, 10 times, and even 12 times magnification. Monocular objectives range in size from 25 millimeters to 40 millimeters. Now, monoculars' main advantages include that they're fast and they're easy to use. They're extremely lightweight and compact, and they can be a lot cheaper than binoculars. They can be a great alternative for those who have impaired vision in one eye, and they are a lot more covert to use, quicker to put away, so in that way, it offers a lot more privacy. Now the monoculars do have their drawbacks compared to binoculars. They have a limited range of focus, they usually lack a diopter adjustment, and there's a faster onset of eye strain and eye fatigue when you're using it for extended periods of time due to the monocular vision. And obviously you won't have that natural rich depth field of view like you would get with binocular vision. Like binoculars, monoculars can have a reticle, ranging, night vision, and other specialized features. Binocular pros and cons. Now the binocular can be considered two monoculars put together. It has double of everything. They need very little introduction because they are extremely popular and a staple optics for all outdoor activities. Now there are a lot of benefits to having and using a binocular and some of those include having three dimensional vision. There are a lot of options with low to high power. You can track moving targets. They can be especially good for low light use. Because of that binocular vision, there's also a delayed onset of eye strain and eye fatigue. So you can sit at the eyepiece for a longer period of time for those long sessions of glassing. They also have a greater range for vision adjustment with the diopter, and there are also multiple types of binoculars available, so there's definitely one that will suit you right for a lot of activities and then a lot of different other options for other activities too. Now, of course, there are going to be some drawbacks of the binocular versus the monocular. For one, they're not as covert or private to use, especially in public places. The size is a huge difference. It's a lot bigger and more bulkier and heavier. They can also be extremely expensive, ranging from the hundreds to the thousands of dollars. And one of the biggest ones is that people have problems viewing with collimation, that is the one circle. So you do have to be able to get that kind of collimation for opti optimal optical performance and comfort. The race is on. Low magnification is a staple monocular feature, but they can be as high powered as your eight times, 10 times, and 12 times binoculars, both are fixed power optics. So really it's at a tie in terms of magnification. Here is a video clip of an eight by 32 monocular up against different binoculars of various apertures with magnifications of seven times, eight times, 10 times, and even 12 times.
Binoculars are often the first choice because of the rich depth of field and the delayed onset of eye strain and eye fatigue because hunters are often spending extended periods of time at the eyepiece for hunts that can last anywhere from hours to days and some of those special hunts that last for weeks. High power binoculars are best for open country and low power binoculars of around six to eight times is perfect for timber and bow hunting. However, I do want to point out that I do use a monocular in the field. They can be especially helpful for uh, waterfowl hunting and quick scanning. And it, they're also very convenient to use. We'll see a lot of action, especially when it fits in your shirt pocket. Bird watching. Binoculars for hunting also offer many of the same great advantages for bird watching. Rich field of view, uh, the ability to spot targets in your peripherals and follow moving targets. And you can also have very compact sizes, especially in the eight to 10 times magnification for bird watching convenience. However, monoculars also offer some noteworthy benefits to bird watchers. Birds are not stationary targets, and so a monocular can offer that fast and instant access to get a quick and rare glimpse. They're also extremely compact, so they can be easily stashed in a pocket or kept in a vehicle without thought. So while I highly recommend having a monocular on you for casual birding, a binocular can offer better dimensional views for the serious birder. 
general observation. Think hiking, camping, wildlife observation at the zoo, or almost any outdoor activity that you would do daily or in public places. Binoculars will certainly offer maximum advantage, especially if you prefer that higher magnification, but a monocular can be an underestimated champ in these scenarios. They're extremely compact and easy to use. They are less conspicuous to use in public places. But while you're out backpacking and hiking in wildlife's natural habitat, a binocular can certainly offer the best views, especially in dynamic conditions with adverse light conditions. But monoculars are perfect for quick and fast use, especially before moving on. You'll also be shaving off the weight and bulk, which is perfect for day excursions. Astronomy. Now, monoculars are magnified optics, so they will get you sights on the moon and they will bring to life stars in the sky that you can't see with the naked eye. Their wide fields of view will also help you to locate constellations. Unfortunately, they are no match for binocular in the 25 power to 70 millimeter aperture range. You need a ton of magnification and big glasses to be able to view celestial bodies and especially to get any sort of detail on their features. Now, if you want to be able to, to capture any of that with a camera, a telescope is always the best recommendation for the job. Night vision and tactical use. There are some officers that are complete optic snobs and they will only ever look to the binocular. But there are also those that acknowledge the monocular as a fast, easy and convenient optic to use. It's all user preference, but it can't be debated that the monocular is more covert to use in the field, thus giving it an advantage over the binoculars. When it comes to night vision, the military has their own contracts and access to all sorts of optics to equip their regimen with. But for the hog and coyote hunter, the budget is usually the deciding factor. Night vision monoculars are cheaper than night vision goggles and night vision binoculars. Night vision monoculars can also be made to be both helmet and weapon mountable. Now they do serve a purpose in these positions, but it must be remembered that most monoculars are not recoil resistant and the magnification can provide issues for ultimate mobility and navigation. Yet there are a lot of hunters out there that are able to rig their equipment to make the best of using a night vision monocular in these scenarios. So while goggles and binoculars are obviously the first choice for many, monoculars are the realistic first choice due to budget. Indoor use. You could be at a museum, art exhibit, or at a conference where there's more distance between you and the subject than you would like. Now the monocular is perfect for these types of indoor scenarios with its low magnification and very compact size. It is also very likely that it will be perceived by others as more socially acceptable to pull out a monocular versus a binocular. Is there a monocular and binocular stigma of using optics in public? Now this is more of a subjective viewpoint versus what it is in reality. And for me, from my personal perspective, is that there is a stigma and it exists with me, but it may not necessarily exist with others. It exists with me as the optics user and I am very keenly aware of how I may appear to others. Yet fortunately in my area, people are very forgiving of it because it is not unusual to run into other hunters in full gear, bird watchers with binoculars on them and all types of outdoorsmen in the field or even at the grocery store. So while I may not experience any real stigmas, I do wonder if I could get away with what I do up here in the country if you were to put me down in the suburbs or in a very busy downtown metropolitan area. So while I may not experience it myself, there are definitely stigmas that people can relate to and do experience for the quality and price points of monoculars, it is our high recommendation that you have one. For the, they're extremely convenient optics to have, you know, stash them in your car, in your pocket for those quick and fast glimpses. Now, while they are not replacements of binoculars, they can be a great supplement for those unique applications and situations. To get a longer list of monocular pros and cons and binocular pros and cons, check out the write-up. That will be in a link in the description below. As always, thanks for tuning in everyone. Like, subscribe, and get outside.